Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So today, inshallah ta'ala, let's take a look at the names of Allah, Al Awwalu Wal Akhir. It seems fitting that we start with Al Awwal Wal Akhir because these names mean the first and the last. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and the last, as is mentioned in the Quran only one time. You find that these names of Allah only occur one time in the Quran when Allah says, Ba'da a'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim. Huwa al awwalu wal akhir wal zahir wal batin wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim. He is the first and the last, the manifest and the intimate, and he is of all things knowing. Furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ confirmed that this is a name of Allah when he made dua using these names of Allah when he says, Allahumma anta al awwalu falaysa qablaka shay'un wa anta al akhiru falaysa ba'daka shay'un. O oh Allah, you are the first, there is nothing before you, and you are the last, and there is nothing after you. And furthermore, Allah's book reflects His majesty. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, you can, you can get a, a, an appreciation for Allah's divine names when you read this Qur'an. How so? Well, the fact is that Allah ta'ala is both the first and the last, and also when you read the Qur'an and when you study it and when you memorize it, one thing that you notice is that held within it are some of the most ancient wisdoms. You find that subhanAllah, some of the truths that you find within the Qur'an are things that you can find uh, in, in deep and ancient wisdoms that have been true throughout all of human history. Why? Because obviously Allah Ta'ala is the author of all of this truth. Allah Ta'ala is uh, the truth, Al-Haq, right? So SubhanAllah, you find that this Qur'an on the one hand has so much of this deep ancient wisdom that can be found in previous uh, uh, scriptures, whether it be the Torah or the Injil, that which is authentic, uh, uh, you know, uh, within it. And SubhanAllah, that which has been taught by previous nations and prophets, as is mentioned in the various stories of the uh, uh, of the Quran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what Ibrahim alayhi salam used to say, what uh, uh, Musa alayhi salam used to say. And so all this ancient wisdom is coming to us so we can appreciate and learn from that which is al awwal the first and the most important things that people learned from long ago. But at the same time, you find that subhanAllah, uh, each reading of the Qur'an reveals new ideas that are perpetually relevant to our modern circumstances. So this Qur'an never becomes something that is relegated to the past. It never becomes something that is old news or backwards or whatever terms you want to say. You can never you know, become so modern and, and so progressive that you get past the Qur'an. No, the truth that is found in the Qur'an is always new and always relevant and every time you read and every time you study and every time you do a deep dive into tafsir, subhanAllah, what are you going to find? You're going to find you're going to come with new things. So Allah Ta'ala is al-awwal wal-akhir, that He is the first and He is the last. In other words, His in knowledge, you'll find that within this Qur'an has ancient beautiful wisdoms that have been benefiting mankind for you know, centuries and then at the same time, subhanAllah, no matter how far we go, no matter how much we learn, no matter how uh, sophisticated we become, the Qur'an will always be relevant and will always be leading and teaching us more and more, subhanAllah. This is why we need to study and appreciate the Qur'an. As Allah says, Then do they not reflect upon the Qur'an or are there locks upon their hearts? Is there something wrong with our hearts that we are locked up? Now the big question is, how do we live with these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives? Well, first and foremost, we should remember that everything that you may want in your life, everything that you may want, has some sort of a means. And that thing, those means, also themselves have a means, right? And also th those, those things that you, know, you want to happen, though, they also have a means and so on and so forth. You see this infinite sort of regress, you could say. So the only one who isn't affected by a prior cause is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is the first and nothing was before him. So if you really want something, oh Allah, uh, you know, uh, help me get this job or help me get married or help me uh, succeed in whatever it may be, right? So, well, that has a certain means. Well, is that just a, that pop out of nowhere? No, that also has a means. And that is so and so on and so forth. So the question is, well, what's at the beginning of all of that? Ultimately, Allah Ta'ala controls. So we make our efforts, we try whatever we can, but at the end of the day, Allah Ta'ala is the absolute uh, first cause of everything that is independent of everything else, and everything is depending upon Him. He is al awwal He is the absolute first. Furthermore, we want our efforts to succeed, and we want them to remain. Nobody wants to start something that falls apart the next day. You don't want to start a business that immediately uh, fails. You don't want to get a degree that becomes obsolete. You know, the moment you've uh, graduated now, your degree is no longer useful. There's no more jobs for in that department, let's say. You don't want that. You want your efforts to actually remain. And so we should remember that Allah Ta'ala is what? Al-Akhir. He is the final. He is the last. And so if you want to leave a lasting legacy, call upon Allah who is Al-Akhir. If you want things to work out and you want to figure out what the first step is going to be, call upon Al-Awwal. You see, these names of Allah, we can start to implement them in our lives, inshaAllah Ta'ala. So yes, the only way to succeed is to work for the one who will remain and never fade. And since nothing is after Allah Ta'ala, then we should call upon Allah, Al-Akhir, the last. 
And we should remember this, subhanAllah, there have been so many different nations that have come and gone. That, you know, people who uh, were uh, successful at one point in time, and then subhanAllah, things fell apart. And we don't want to end up like that. We want to call upon the one who's going to make things last. And the only one who could do that is Allah. Al-Akhir. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala is, let's take a look at this name of Al-Awwal again. And we should, from this, remember that we make Allah Ta'ala first in our lives. That's really crucial and important. You make Allah first in your own personal life. Why? Because only Allah Ta'ala is Al-Akhir, the one who will last forever, right? So I want to make Allah first in my life. Why? Because if Allah is first in my life and I make Him my top priority, then what is that going to imply? That He's going to be with me forever, inshaAllah. As we know, Allah says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everyone upon this earth will perish. Everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to finally uh, break down and die. And there will remain only the face of your Lord, the owner of majesty and honor. So subhanAllah, this ayah is reminding us what? Make Allah num number one first. Why? Because he's the only one that will last. And so now you see that how these two names of Allah come together so beautifully. The fact is that people will come and go out of your life regularly. Sometimes people die. Other times you find that people simply grow apart. This is part of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with you from the beginning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you consistently and forever. As Allah ta'ala says, Inna hadha lirizquna. Indeed, this is our provision. For it, there is no depletion. My provisions don't deplete. Whatever I, I can give and give and give forever, everybody else, they're going to have an expiration date. They're going to stop being able to help or provide or whatever the case is. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it never ends. So He was with you from the beginning and Allah ta'ala can be with you uh, continuously. And therefore, your only means to actually remain having a good life is if you cling and hold on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the next. SubhanAllah, sometimes we get caught up in our daily rat race and we forget about the big picture in life. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Remember these names of Allah, Al-Awwal wal akhir Trends may come and go, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been here and will always be here. Inna ila rabbika la ruja'a That indeed to your Lord is the return. This is what Allah ta'ala tells us. Our life is a journey and uh, Allah Ta'ala has been with us each step of the way. He knows whether your life is a success story of constant improvement or he knows if your life is a cautionary tale of a downward spiral. He knows the trajectory of your life because Allah Ta'ala is al-awwalu wal akhir. Uh, so call upon Allah Ta'ala and ask him to mend and fix and improve your life so that the entire trajectory of your life, which is known to him, uh, uh, inshallah Ta'ala will be upon the right path. These names of Allah remind us of how brief this life is and how we should try to hold on to Allah Ta'ala because he lasts forever. He's always been here, he will always remain here. It is us that are the ones who are transient and fleeting. It is this existence, this dunya that comes and goes very quickly. So yes, and what is another implication of this? Another very beautiful implication of these names of Allah is what? Be the first in worship. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his prophet to say what? فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ I am the first of Allah's worshippers. I am the first one to dedicate myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be first. We should say, if, if, if Allah is al-awwal, the first, then we should want to be first as well. We want to be first in the rows of salah. When you come to the masjid, you want to be in the first row. You, when you're at home and the time for prayer, you hear the adhan go off, why not get up and pray immediately instead of delaying your salawat? Why not be the first when it comes to generosity? Why should somebody give more than you? You should give more. Why should somebody mem memorize more Qur'an than you? If Allah Ta'ala is al-awwal, then I'm going to make Allah first in my life. And therefore, I want to be first in Qur'an, I want to be first in generosity, I want to be first to come to prayer, and so on and so forth. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَهُمْ لَهَا سَابِقُونَ That it is those who hasten to good deeds, and they outstrip others therein. This is a beautiful quality of the believers. They actually push each other and encourage each other to always try to compete and be first in doing good. So yes, you want to make dua to Allah Ta'ala. Uh, 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 that Allah Ta'ala is number one, first in your life. One of the beautiful du'as that we should learn is what? Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa al-amal alladhi yuballighuna hubbak Allahumma ja'al hubbak ahabba ilayna min anfusina wa min ahalina wa min al-ma'i al-barid That, O oh Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of those who you love and deeds that will bring us to your love. O oh Allah, make your love more beloved to us than our own selves, our own families, and even cool water, as in cool water on a hot day. What is this implying? You want Allah's love. You want Allah Ta'ala 
uh, to love you and that you love him. So that's putting him first, number one in your life. Making Allah Ta'ala first is the pinnacle of faith. As the Prophet tells us what? لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. None of you is a true believer until I am dearer to him than his child, his father, and the whole of mankind. In other words, you need to put Allah and his messenger number one. They have to be first. This deen goes first. So Allah and his messenger have to be above all other human beings. And of course, Allah's al-akhir, the final, the last, the ultimate. And all this implies what? That we, not, we want to make the final, the last words that we say, La ilaha illallah, as the Prophet used to supplicate. The Prophet used to make this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an yatakhabbatani ash-shaytan inda al-maut. Oh Allah, I take refuge in you from shaytan making me stumble at the time of my death. This is a very beautiful dua. We should all make this dua. Oh Allah, don't let me stumble and be distracted at the time of my death. I want my last words to be what? La ilaha illallah. So why? Because Allah is al-akhir. So I, you want to make sure that you end in a good way. Your life is, ends in a good way. Also remembering Allah is al-akhir implies what? That Allah subhan- that it reminds you that there's going to be yaw- al-yawm al-akhir, a final day, judgment day. It reminds you of this. And the final point I want to mention is that the Prophet sallallahu says what? إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي الصَّلَاتِكَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاةَ مُوَدِّعَ That the Prophet says, when you stand to pray, pray like you're praying your final prayer, your farewell prayer. And what is the implication here? That you pray and you have the intention that you're saying, Ya Allah, this might be the last time I pray. Because the fact of the matter is, there will be a last time that you pray. Right? There's going to be a time where it's going to be the last time you say, Allahu Akbar, make that takbir, go into ruku'ah, go into sujood. That there will be a final time that you do that. So you should always remember this. Remember, this could be my last. Why? Allah is al-akhir. Allah is the final. Allah is the last. And therefore, this could be my last. And I will end up going back to him on al-yawm al-akhir, the day, the judgment day. So may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who can keep these names of al-awwalu wal akhiru in our minds. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless us all to remember these names and call upon him using them and implement them, implement them in our lives. Jazakul khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.